my favorite dinosaurs. I'm so glad to be back at the museum. I'm the fast and furious velociraptor. Look at me, Motor, chasing that little hamster. Roar! Yes, that's me long ago. Hello, everyone. I'm Malkia. Before I became a paleontologist, I used to play with the dinosaurs at the museum gift shop where I worked. Big, ferocious T-Rex. I'm an Archaeopteryx. Only two feet tall, but I have wings. I still laugh at myself when I think of those days. Eating triceratops. At six tons, I don't exactly hop, but now, wow! It sure was fun. Though more serious now, my dino passion keeps growing and growing. I guess you could say it dinosaurs. I went from playing with dinosaurs to digging them up all over the earth. Dinosaur fossils are found on every continent even Antarctica. Let's go back in time, 200 million years ago, when dinosaurs dominated. Slowly, we will see when all seven continents were connected. This is Earth as it looked long ago, a land called Pangaea. This slow continental drifting, or plate tectonics, is caused by a hot Earth. On the inside, our planet's fiery hot iron core pushes molten rock upwards, where it then cools and sinks down. These are massive convection currents, and they move continents. And don't forget, plate tectonics continues today causing terrifying earthquakes and volcanoes. I recall another time when I was even younger, around nine or 10, my parents were showing me bird constellations like Cygnus the Swan, Aquila the Eagle, and Corvus the Crow. So I had to ask, Are there any dinosaur constellations? They kind of laughed and told me how dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and constellations were created only thousands of years ago. A huge difference in time. And what they said next really surprised me. Well, Kia, these are dinosaur constellations. Birds are dinosaurs. Instead of a terrible lizard, I imagined a terrible chicken, I protested. Birds never came from dinosaurs, no way. I thought I knew it all way back then. <laughs> I quickly discovered my parents were right. And it's one amazing story, how birds are living dinosaurs. To begin this tale of change over time, we must remember not all dinosaurs were big, lumbering beasts. Many were quite small like tiny, feathery Cynoceropteryx. This small dinosaur was only a foot tall and weighed just five pounds. Look at this little dinosaur. It's called a Microraptor. It has wings for its arms and legs. Scientists think Microraptors flew from trees like a glider, not from the ground up. 
Here is the Utah Raptor. It's a bit bulkier and slower than some of its famous cousins, like the Velociraptor and Dynamicus. These raptors and all their relatives belong to a group of dinosaurs called dromaeosaurs, or running lizards. Everyone in this raptor family is a carnivore. Most are smaller than humans, and they all had feathers, despite more popular Jurassic depictions that show them without feathers. Love the movies, though. All these dromaeosaurs, and even the mighty T-Rex, are theropod dinosaurs. Theropod means bipedal, or having two feet. And there's evidence that T-Rex may have had feathers too. Imagine that! Tracing the origins of modern birds from theropod dinosaurs means looking inside. To their bones. Their skeletons are very similar. Notice the three-toed feet with claws and their S-shaped necks. Both bird and dinosaur walk on two feet with their legs directly underneath them. Both spread out their arms or wings to protect their eggs. Each has hollow bones that help them breathe more efficiently and lightweight to fly. And they both have a furcula or a wishbone. This is a recent discovery, and a big one. Sure, it still seems strange to say birds are dinosaurs, but life has been changing, evolving since it all began billions of years ago. All life on Earth is related. It all sprang from one seed, one protocell. This is the common origin for all life on our planet. The theory of evolution can't tell us how life started, back when our planet was young. But it does reveal how it changes, amazingly diversifies, over long periods of time. Life starts slow on Earth. Two main groups of life, bacteria and archaea, start small and stay small. Yet, they keep evolving and are all around us today. But the eukarya vine of life evolves into larger life forms and really takes off with the Cambrian explosion and the start of the Paleozoic era, some 540 million years ago. Animals, plants, fish, fungi, insects, all start here. All living things reproduce. Spiders, starfish, ferns. The DNA in their offspring guides life's development. DNA changes when it passes from parent to child in any species. The recombination of DNA from each parent creates slightly different DNA for offspring. Also, random mutations or copying errors create small changes. It's true, no one is exactly the same. New life with slightly different DNA might be able to adapt better to a new environment and survive. Eventually, some will create a whole new species on the great tree of life. 
Darwin called this natural selection. Let's wander over and zoom in on the dinosaur vines to see where birds came from. Around 230 million years ago, during the early Triassic period, the first dinosaurs appear. They evolve from existing reptiles. Eoraptor is often considered the first dinosaur. An extinction event, maybe from intense volcanic eruptions, starts the Jurassic period. Now, dinosaurs really start to rule. They branch off into the bird-hipped and the lizard-hipped dinosaurs. The sauropods are the lizard-hipped, who grow into big beasts like Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus. The bird-hipped dinosaurs divide into the Ornithischians, like Stegosaurus, and the Theropods, like Torvosaurus. Around the time of the warmer Cretaceous period, we see Archaeopteryx, the first bird-like dinosaur. It is also the start of the Dromaeosaurs. Remember the running lizards? Millions of years keep passing by. Toward the end of the Cretaceous period, we see Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex. Small birds appear too, like Asteriornis or the Wonder Chicken, and fly among their kind, the dinosaurs. And finally, some birds survive the big asteroid impact. eventually to become, after millions of years, the 10,000 different species of birds we see today. People often ask me, Malkia, what about lizards and crocodiles? Aren't they dinosaurs? That's a legitimate question. Lizards, crocodiles, and even turtles all started about the same time as dinosaurs and survived the big asteroid hit. But they are more like cousins, not true dinosaurs. So you might inquire, what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur? Going back to the bones, the answer is a hole in the hip socket. This permits their upright stance and allows them to run faster with greater endurance than other reptiles. Another question I get is, what about the pterosaurs? Well, looking at their bone structure, it turns out they were reptiles, not birds. And technically, they are not even dinosaurs. Close relatives who evolved on a separate branch of the reptile family tree. I love to answer questions about dinosaurs, share their amazing stories. It first started way back in college. We created this fun trivia game. 
Hey everyone, it's time to play Who Wants to Be a Paleontologist? I'm Chris Cretaceous, and today we focus on dino feathers and dino flight. And so, first question. What was the first dinosaur discovered that has feathers? Was it A, Archaeopteryx, B, Velociraptor, or C, Littlefoot? The answer is A, Archaeopteryx. And this is a replica of the first Archaeopteryx fossil ever found. Number two. Why did dinosaurs first develop feathers? Was it A, to fly, B, to stay warm, or C, to make pillows? The answer, it's B, to stay warm. Scientists learned that feathers came millions of years before flight. Also, colorful feathers can help you find a mate. Next one. Why did dinosaurs take to the skies? Was it A, to survive and evade predators? Was it B, they got tired of walking? Or was it C, for the great view? Well, B and C might be great answers for humans, but the answer is A, to survive. Flying also allowed you to cover more land and therefore find more food. So I'd like to thank you all for playing. Uh, this is Chris Cretaceous for Who Wants to Be a Paleontologist. Hope you got them all right. See you next time. Those were wild times back then. Archaeopteryx has always been my favorite. I mean, so cool, right? Sharing features of a dinosaur and a bird. We have unearthed many Archaeopteryx fossils. It took over a hundred years and many more discoveries before the dinosaur avian link was widely accepted. So I've mentioned the huge asteroid a few times already, but let's take a closer look. It was 66 million years ago. The doomsday rock was barreling straight toward Earth. The dinosaurs and all living creatures were oblivious about what was going to happen next. The size of this asteroid is startling. It is six miles across, as big as Mount Everest. The rock weighs 460 trillion tons. Its speed is 15 miles per second. Let's pause here for a moment. Time for another story. Remember Asteriornis, AKA the wonder chicken from the dino tree? Not long ago, I was part of a group digging up fossils in a limestone quarry along the Belgian-Dutch border in Europe. We uncovered a strange rock using a sophisticated X-ray CT scan. We found this tiny bird skull. Detailed study of the skull shows similar traits found in today's chickens and ducks. Essentially, the wonder chicken is a modern bird, although the skull dates back 66.8 million years. Wonder chicken would have looked like a small quail. It survived the monstrous collision because it was small, therefore could reproduce faster and be more mobile. With its beak, tough food sources could be cracked open. And as we just saw, flight and feathers helped with its ability to persevere. Back to the imminent asteroid blast. Recall this asteroid is huge, weighs tons, and is moving crazy fast. The 
dinosaur extinction comes quickly. After the devastating impact, countless rocks and debris from the blast gets ejected up into the sky. It falls back to Earth, triggering a worldwide lava rainstorm, a global inferno. Eventually, the planet cools. But above, the dense clouds full of ash and dirt block the sun's energy, darkening and chilling the Earth to deadly levels. These quick and extreme climatic changes cause worldwide extinctions. Around 70% of plants and animals perish, not just the dinosaurs. Today's Earth still faces asteroid and comet dangers. Though these threats are very real, the chances of a disastrous impact are very small. Still, we scan the skies with our telescopes into the dark night, finding and charting potential hazards, protecting our precious Earth, our home. My passion for dinosaurs continues to this day. I now help museums design dinosaur exhibits. I went from playing with dino toys to creating dinosaurs to look as real as possible so people can feel what it would be like to walk among these beasts. And we update these displays as new discoveries come in these changes over time really bring them to life. So step outside after the show and watch Dino Soars!